Good morning, divers. It's Alec Pierce again from Scuba 2000 with another tech tip. And I did say good morning. It's 6.30 in the morning. Maybe I look a little blurry. That's the only time we could get studio time. Uh, Kevin, our cameraman, uh, was late booking. So here we are in the studio. I'm kidding. We're at Scuba 2000. Anyway, guess what we're talking about today? Just look down here, Kevin, just for a moment. Guess what we're going to talk about today? Exactly right tanks. Uh, and the reason for that is somebody called the other day or somebody emailed the other day and asked about tanks and steel tanks and DIN valves and so on. I'm not sure if you know what DIN valve is, but we're going to share that very quickly with you today. Maybe it'll give you some information, some uh, good clear information that'll help you make your diving a little safer, a little more fun. That's the whole idea of these tech tips. Hope you've been enjoying them and thanks to everybody for your comments. I can't believe how many I get. Anyway, uh, tanks. Tanks are really important in scuba diving. Air underwater is so important, you have no idea. And uh, anyway, uh, so I want to talk a minute. Talk. Now, this, this is the tank that you all use. I would be willing to bet you that every scuba diver who's, who, you know, who, who started diving after 1985 uh, trained and used and still uses when you travel this tank right here. This is what's called the standard 80 cubic foot aluminum tank. It's made of aluminum, which is new. And they started coming out in the 80s and uh, they have pretty much replaced every other type of tank on the market. So it's an aluminum tank, uh, very thick walls, very strong, and has a standard valve on top to put your, your yoke regulator on, straightforward when you rent a tank, when you go south for a tank, this is what you get. 80 cubic feet, uh, 3,000 psi, 3,000 psi is the pressure uh, of this tank, standard. This is it, this is the standard. Fire extinguishers are all painted red, always. This is the standard tank. This is what you get. 80 cubic foot aluminum. But there are other tanks. And somebody did, uh, did ask the other day about steel tanks. Yes, steel tanks. All tanks at one time were made of steel. At one time, aluminum was very, very expensive. Uh, steel tanks uh, started coming out for scuba diving in, in, in the probably the uh, late 40s, early 50s. I actually have in my collection some homemade tanks. You know, we actually used to make them. I have three homemade scuba units. Homemade tanks. There were tanks that were taken from aircraft and modified and homemade regulators. Yeah, believe it or not. Maybe I'll show this to you sometime. Uh, so back then, steel. There was very little aluminum, so they were made of steel. Steel was strong. It was cheap and they were made. The, the first, excuse me, one minute, the very first steel tank and the one that was around for many, many years, this was the standard tank before the aluminum 80 for many years. This is what it looked like. This was the standard 72 cubic foot tank. And you can see that this tank is a little smaller, a little physically a little smaller, a little smaller diameter, a little shorter, not much. And uh, this tank was the standard tank from the 50s to the 80s, over 30 years. And uh, if you ask any diver who's been diving for more than 25 or 30 years about his Steel 72, he'll, he'll smile and reminisce, oh yeah, they were great tanks. And they were a lot of fun. They were a little lighter than aluminum. That's kind of weird, isn't it? They are lighter than aluminum. The reason for that is simple. Although aluminum metal is lighter, the walls of aluminum need to be much thicker. The steel tanks are thin walls. There's less steel, so they are actually lighter. Uh, and uh, not as much pressure, not as much air. The, uh, the 80 cubic foot tank I showed you holds 80 cubic feet. In theory, it would last for 80 minutes at the surface. And of course, that depends on it varies over depth. This is a 72 cubic foot tank. Now that's a little bit funny too because here's 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 an opportunity for you to win a free beer with some trivia. Although it's called the 72, it actually holds 71.2 cubic feet. They rounded it up the 72 because it sounds like more. That's called salesmanship, you see. But even that's kind of interesting because it doesn't hold 71.2 unless it's overfilled by 10%. So it does have a stamped pressure on here. You can see that the stamped pressure on this tank is 2250, 2250 psi. That's the stamped pressure. But if you take a look at the very first uh, uh, examination, this tank was made in the third month of 61. March, uh, uh, for, for March, yeah, March of 1961. See a little plus sign? That plus sign meant that we could fill this tank to 10% more than 2250, which is 2475. At 2475, this tank holds 71.2 cubic feet, or 72, okay? However, after the first five years, there's no more pluses. This tank has had lots of extra visuals, lots of them. This tank's been around a long time, so it's been tested, hydrostatically tested several times. There's lots of stamps on it, and all the subsequent stamps do not have the plus sign. Hence, no 10% overfill. 
So this tank only holds 65 cubic feet. Okay, so it's a 72 cubic foot tank that holds 71.2 cubic feet, but actually only 65. That's got to win you a free beer in the bar with a bunch of divers. You know, you got to work out a trivia question there. Anyway, this was a standard tank. You see the valve was different too. This was called the pillar valve, different from today's valve. The knob is on the top and the O-ring, a little bit different, big and fat. They weren't very good back then. And you'll notice the neck as well. You see the Teflon tape, the sealing tape? This valve, <coughs> didn't, we didn't have O-rings, very good O-rings, so this, this valve was actually forced into the tank, sealed with some tape, Teflon tape, and then forced with a great big bar and forced into the tank to make it seal. Nowadays you can take the valve out by hand. So there were a few differences, but this is the original steel tank. They're not used much anymore. So my vintage divers use them. We actually do a lot of vintage diving, and vintage divers will get these old tanks, make sure they're safe safe uh, hydrostatically tested visual exam we talked about that in a previous tech tip and i make sure they're safe when they fill them up and they go diving it's a whole lot of fun however <clears throat> this tank is gone so we have the lou and matey but there are steel tanks yes there are new steel tanks let me get one for you let's hear what it looks like <clears throat> here's one right there a nice and new and clean oh boy is it <clears throat> nice and new and clean so here's a steel tank that's what it looks like today. Same valve as our old 80, same valve because we use the same regulators. And this is a new steel tank, brand spanking new, made by a company called Faber. And, uh, and uh, these tanks are heavier than the aluminum tanks because now these are higher pressure. So to accommodate the higher pressure, now the walls are a bit thicker. So now the weight difference of the steel versus aluminum comes into play. And this steel tank is now heavier than the aluminum tank. <clears throat> you see the pressure on this tank is 3442. 3,442 PSI. A little more than the 3,000 of the aluminum. And it has more air as well. This particular tank has 100 cubic feet. So instead of 80 cubic feet, you have 100 cubic That's 20 cubic feet more. That's an extra 15 minutes. That's a bonus. Particularly if you're a person maybe a little bit bigger uh, and maybe not as uh, efficient in the water and you use more air than your buddy. Well, if you had one of these tanks, 100s, they come in 120 as well. But if you had a 100, that would give you an extra 15, 20 minutes worth of air so you and your buddy would get out at the same time. <clears throat> so what's the difference between the steel and aluminum? I know one steel, one's aluminum. I mean, what's the difference, practical difference? The only real practical difference is the higher capacity. At 3442, this has more air. Same size as the 80, pretty much the same size. The other difference is because this tank is heavier, it's made of steel, it's more negative. So some divers like to have a more negative tank. What that means is they can take a little weight off their weight belt. If you're diving in cold water wearing a wetsuit or a dry suit, you could be wearing as much as 25 or 30 pounds of weights. It's a lot of weights. If you have this tank on, you can take off five or six pounds wear less weight. So that's another small benefit. What are the disadvantages to a steel tank? There's always a give and take on this, right? The disadvantages, there's also two disadvantages. The first disadvantage is very practical. It costs twice as much. You can buy a Lulum 80 tank now for under $300, commonly $200 if you shop around a little bit. A steel tank like this is over five, over $500. Again, sometimes you can shop around and get one for around four, twice as much money. So you really have to think, do you need that extra 15 uh, minutes of air time? If you do, you do. Uh, they're pretty popular though. The other uh, practical uh, uh, problem, uh, disadvantage of steel tanks is that you have to be very careful with them because they're steel. Steel does rust. So all the rules that apply to an aluminum tank, never let it get empty, don't drop it, take care of it, apply even more so to a steel tank. It's very important that the steel tank is never allowed to get empty. If it did get empty, then moisture, salt water moisture might get inside the tank, and in a steel tank, it would act very, very quickly to destroy the tank. But other than those two disadvantages, the steel tank is, is, is pretty popular. Still, still doesn't begin to come near the, the popularity and the, and the use of the aluminum tank, but it's pretty popular. So that's some of the questions and, and, and answers about steel versus aluminum. I did want to show you another thing at the same time. Some Somebody else asked about <coughs> the different types of valves, and there are different types of valves. The valves are related to the regulator. Take a little peek right here, Kevin. This is a regulator first stage that you're all accustomed to. A first stage, and you take out the dust cap, and it fits over the valve like so. You've all seen this. You've all done this. It's very simple. You put it on like there you go. This is a yoke type regulator and fits right onto this tank, no problem. And this is what we're most most accustomed to. But look at this. Here's a first stage as well. What, what's this? Where's the yoke? 
There is no yoke on it. What? Pull off the dust cap and there's threads. What's with that? Well, this is called a DIN. D-I-N. <clears throat> I could tell you what DIN means, but it'd be easy if you Googled it and looked it up. My German pronunciation is not very good. <clears throat> so you look it up. It is, a, it is a, a, a German technical term. It's been shortened to DIN for, for us in North America. And, and the DIN... <clears throat> regulator fits into a DIN valve, D-I-N. This is what a DIN valve looks like. It's threaded. Well, that makes sense because the first stage is threaded. So with this particular regulator valve combination, you put the threads in like so, and you just screw it on. There you go. Simple, huh? Just like that. Now, <clears throat> some divers will tell you that the DIN is better. Be very, very careful whenever somebody says better. You know, <clears throat> Google, call me, do something and check because better is always relative, first of all. If it's better here, then it, it may give up some advantages here. This is a little more expensive, the DIN, probably because it's not quite so common. But some divers will say the DIN is better, it's stronger. Ah, you know. There is a reason for for a DIN valve and, and, and DIN regular. There's a reason for it. It's a very practical reason. The good old standard yoke that we all love and use is rated and tested and rated to be used to pressures up to 3,000. 29.99 to be exact. <clears throat> At, uh, sorry, 3,500. 3,500. So that would be 34.99 to be exact. Once you hit 3,500 PSI, then the yoke is deemed to be not as good. Not because the yoke isn't strong. The actual steel yoke itself is good to 4,500 PSI. But the way that the O-ring fits into a yoke type valve is sealed with a yoke type regulator is not quite as good a seal as with the DIN. Perfectly fine up to that 3,500 PSI. But once you get over 3,500 PSI, then that way that the O-ring is held in there is not quite so good. With the DIN, the O-ring is what they call a captured O-ring. It's held in a little more securely, surrounded by steel, seals tightly, and when this is screwed down, seals tightly in there, so the O-ring can't extrude, can't pop out. That's what extrude is a fancy word for pop out. So it can't extrude under the higher pressure. So if the tank pressure gets over 3,500 PSI, then you must have a DIN. It's just that simple. You can't use a yoke. If it's under 3,500 PSI, you can use a yoke. So one is not better than the other. It's a practical thing, you know. If you have a car that goes 200 miles an hour, you need special tires. You don't need those tires on your Honda Civic. Same idea. Tank pressure is up to 3,499. 34, did I do that right? Yeah, 34.99. <laughs> the yoke is perfect. 3,500 and higher, you must use a DIN. Not better, just a matter of technical necessity. Um, this particular valve, as a matter of fact, this particular tank is kind of interesting. You notice that the pressure is 34.42. Why did they choose 34.42? Well, there's a very simple reason. If they had gone to 3,500, they would have had to have a DIN only. You would not be able to use a yoke on this. But with this particular steel tank, 100, and, and 100 cubic foot, at 3442, you can use your yoke regulator or a DIN if you prefer. So it's, it's convertible. As a matter of fact, this valve that we have here, as you can see, DIN, right? And then you take this DIN insert, that's what we call a DIN insert, and screw it in like so, and now it becomes yoke because it's only 3442. If this was a 3500 PSI tank, and they make them, 35 and higher actually, if it was a 3500 PSI tank, you would not be able to use a yoke on it. You would not be able to use that insert. I hope that's clear. It's a little bit confusing, but I hope it's clear. All tanks <clears throat> up to 3499 PSI can use a yoke. And the yoke regulator is perfectly fine. It's just as good, strong as anything else. As soon as the tank pressure gets above 3,500, 3,500 or above, then you must use a DIN. I hope that's clear. Don't forget to look up DIN at Google. So there's some, uh, some, uh, some ideas and some thoughts and some answers to some of the questions that you've been sending me about steel, the old steel, the new steel, and the aluminum, the differences between them. DIN and yoke I've addressed a little bit. You may have some more questions. Sometimes when I do these tech tips, I get more questions than I've answered. But anyway, that's always good. I really, really enjoy the comments and the questions you've been sending me. I try to get back to them as many as I can. If I, if I miss one or two, please forgive me. And uh, I hope you keep watching watching our tech tips. And I hope that was interesting and answered a few of your questions. Okay, that's it. I have to go and get some sleep now. Thanks, guys. Alec Pierce, Tech Tips from Scuba 2000.